good morning students myself ganesh wag assistant professor of english from anna saheb auti college mansur dear students as you know that language plays an important role in our life and that is why language is very much important so today we are going to talk about the concept from linguistics that is morphology as everybody knows that uh, we have uh, linguistic levels and four levels which are very much important first level is phonology second is morphology third one is syntax fourth one is semantics and the last one is pragmatics so today we are going to talk about one concept and the concept is or the term is morphology so let us have a look into the term morphology so first of all we are going to talk about the definition of morphology and uh, what morphology actually is or what morphology talks about so basically morphology is a branch of linguistics as we have discussed earlier that it is one of the important branches it is one of the important aspects of language analysis or language level and that is morphology it is one of the branches of linguistics so what is morphology as such we need to ask this question to ourselves so in simple words morphology is a study of word structure or different forms of words generally how do we use language we use language with the help of sentences we use the language with the help of words and words play an important role or the sentences play an important role but how those words are or how these words are segregated into parts so one thing which comes in our mind is word so it is a study of word or it is a study how the word functions in a grammatical structures of a language that is what we call it as a morphology so the definition of morphology or the simplest definition of morphology is is a study of words or different forms of words actually so uh, uh, in a language grammatical analysis generally takes place with two basic units the first is i just told you that it is word and the second unit is a sentence for example say uh, 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 when we talk about say words are generally divided by how they are divided they they are divided by separated by uh, uh, from uh, you know like spaces there are spaces so we divide words by spaces but when you uh, 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 divide a sentence we divide it by commas and that is why word is very much important uh, aspect in morphological analysis so uh, first thing which comes in our mind when you talk about say morphology the basic unit is a morpheme so first of all we need to talk about or we need to talk about the definition of morpheme also or what this term morphology and what is morpheme we need to talk about that first so a morpheme is smaller unit in a word so it is actually a minimum meaningful component or unit in a word is called as a morpheme so for example see uh, 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 when we talk about scientifically or when we talk about say uh, uh, in a linguistic language we need to say a morpheme is the smallest meaningful unit in grammatical uh, system of a language so it is the most important thing that is the minimum or minimal meaningful unit for example see look at the words like uh, you know uh, i'm going to take uh, it as a word like say unlike now this or this word is made up of two components or two morphemes first is un and the second one is like so unlike un is prefix and like is a word now both these words are making new word that is unlike but you know when you uh, uh, you know just separate these words or when you just have the division of these words we are getting two morphemes here un and like and that is why we are getting a word like unlike and we say that the word unlike consists of two morphemes the first is un and the second one is like so likewise the word unlikely has three morphemes for example un like and li so un actually is uh, look at this word this un is a prefix like is another morpheme and the last one is li this is the last morpheme of the word unlikely so unlikely this word has three morphemes un like and li now when we talk about say un un is a prefix like is a separate morpheme and the li is also a separate morpheme but the thing is that li is a kind of prefix uh, sorry suffix now this word unlikely is made up of three morphemes and which consists of three morphemes now the thing is that see the morpheme of a word can be shown singly by using curly brackets now how do we show a morpheme 
So morphemes are generally shown with these curly brackets, like say as I have shown here, for example, I have shown here, un is shown in a curly bracket plus like in curly bracket and the third one is ly, that is li is also in a curly bracket. So we are writing these words or we generally write these words with the help of curly brackets. Now we will uh, turn, uh, turn to next concept that is allomorph. Now every morpheme is also having its own allomorphs. Okay. Now what is allomorph? Now when we talk about say uh, when I use the word like say cat, when you have, have, when I have the plural form of the word cat, I need to say cats. But when I say dog, I'm using yes form, like a plural form, but I'm not saying dogs, I'm saying dogs. When I'm saying rose, I'm again, when I'm using a plural form of the word rose, it is roses. So when I talk about say roses, I'm using yes form to it, means in plural forms of these words, like say cats, dogs, and roses, the yes or the uh, uh, yes form is changing its pronunciation. Yes form is changing its uh, like uh, pronunciation in the sense cats, s, dogs, z, and when I talk about say roses, it is becoming is. So, s, z, is. Now, these are different phonological variations, different phonological interpretation of the word or sorry of the morpheme s. So, s has three different allomorphs. So, the simplest definition of allomorph would be a different phonological representation of a morpheme is called as allomorph. So, morphemes are actually, uh, allomorphs are actually morpheme variants. Now, there are different phonological variations are there, they are having different phonological representations are there and that is why we are calling them as allomorphs. So, actually when we talk about say allomorphs, allomorphs are phonologically conditioned or there is a rule or there are rules, certain rules which govern the morphemes and allomorphs also and that is why the allomorphs are phonologically adapted or conditioned, their forms are dependent on the neighboring phonemes actually. As I told you like you know look at the word like say cat. So when you talk about say cat, see here this is what we call a phonemic transcription here. Now k at cat, the last sound in this word is t. So when you say cat and when you have the plural form of cat, we are saying cats. So this yes is pronounced as s. Look at the word dog. When you have the plural, plural form of the word dog, we are also adding here or we are adding here s for the sake of pluralization here. But the thing is that when you have the pronunciation, we are using z. So it is becoming it's not dogs, but instead of that, we say dogs. Look at the word rose or rose. So when you say rose, when you have the plural form, again you are adding es form to it, but when you are having the pronunciation, we are saying roses. So this sir, plural form of sir, is having three different phonological variations. The first is sir, second one is z, and the other one is is that is sir z is so sir this for him is having three different allomorphs sir in plural form or in sir in plural way we are having three different realizations or three different variations sir z is so sir z is are allomorphs of sir is it clear so sir has three different allomorphs in the same way when you have uh, when we talk about say past tense form when we add ed look look at the word like say play p l a y play what do we say played so played d again of ed so d also has d is also having three allomorphs t d id look at the word like say when i'm saying walk how do we pronounce the word in past tense form we say walked. We say walked. We don't say walked. What do we say? We say walked. So, t, ed is having t. The same thing, p, l, a, y, play. And I am adding ed to it. And but I am pronouncing the word plate. Instead of saying plate, I am saying played. 
next is watch w a t c h but when i say i am not saying watched i am saying watched are you getting what i am trying to say watched so the the and last one is last phonological variation or last phonological conditioning of the word or uh, sorry of the the uh, morphem is id so the the and id are three different phonological variations of one past tense uh, form of ed three okay so in the same way we are having three things here in plural and past tense in plural we are having sir has three different realizations sir the is in the same way of the past tense form ed we are having three different realizations the the id we'll move to another form now um, there are different types of morphemes actually as i told you last time that you know morpheme is a smallest meaningful unit in a language so minimum meaningful unit in a language in the same way morphemes have their types there are three types of morphemes actually the first morpheme is actually free morpheme the second one is bound morpheme and the last one is zero morpheme now first of all we need to talk about or we need to talk about in the sense we need to see what free morpheme actually is now the free morpheme is the morphemes which can stand by their own or stand by uh, can stand by itself or which has its own independent meaning is a lexical variety or lexical item is called as a free morpheme look like the words like say na i am i have just written accept happier back cap fair dance walk you can take any item in the world generally nouns adverbs adjectives anything okay which can stand by itself is called as a free morpheme now look at the thing see this is bottle now what is this bottle bottle can stand by itself bottle is a word a lexical set or lexical item that is why bottle is a free morpheme now look at the word i am just showing you this duster now this duster actually is a lexical entity lexical item and that is why it is standing by itself the word i am talking about i am not talking about this object i am talking about the word actually so this is a duster so duster can stand by itself and that is why i can say that duster is a free morpheme now look at the word like say see i am just using this pen now pen is a free morpheme why it is free morpheme because it can stand by itself it is having its own meaning and that is why pen is a free morpheme is it clear to all of you now uh, uh, see again i'll repeat it a morpheme which can stand by itself or the morpheme which can stand on their own as an independent entity or word is called a free morpheme so is actually a dictionary item a lexical set or lexical entity which is a morpheme which is a free morpheme so accept appear paper anything anything is called as a free morpheme again we'll be talking about another form of morpheme another type of morpheme is bound morpheme now the word bound itself denotes it is dependent on other free morpheme the morpheme which cannot stand by itself the morpheme which depends on the free morpheme is called as a bound morpheme now look at the definition i have just written over a definition of the word bound morpheme like say bound morphemes which are always attached to a free morpheme and cannot stand on their own as an independent words are called bound morphemes now look at the word like say see i'm just using a word see when i'm saying dislike now like is here yeah, there are two words which are you know there are two compounding words dis and like now the word dis not word i'm i'm not saying do word but it is a morpheme the second morpheme and the uh, there are two morphemes the first word is a prefix dis and the other word is also a morpheme like like is a free morpheme but this does not have its own meaning it cannot stand by itself and yet it has to be dependent on the free morpheme and that is why we are getting the word dislike unless and until we attach it to the like or the word which is free morpheme the bound morpheme may or may not have meaning of its own that is why they are dependent morphemes they are that is why they are called as bound morphemes okay so look at the word like say a uh, 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 bound morphemes like you know all prefixes all suffixes are generally considered to be bound morphemes like say look at here see here 
we are getting un unhappy unpredictable there are many words we can create out of it word dis disappear dis disorganize dis dislike dislike there are many dishonor. yes dishonor very good discuss. discuss no not discuss discuss is a full word discuss is a full word because you know I, i'll be talking about it later in the next lecture i'll be talking about discuss this word cannot be segregated in two parts because this word is a single entity or single entity itself is a free morphem discuss okay but look at the word like say pre premature premature very good prediction uh, not prediction again uh, 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 you are wrong Pre prepare prepare no. no prepare is a full word prediction is a full word pre like you know pre primary pre, -primary. pre mature no, pre, pre presentation pre examination there are many pre word uh, or pre morphem can be added to a free morphem okay so free morphem and bound morphem bound morphem generally go with free morphems free morphems have their own meaning but whereas bound morphems they do not contain their own meaning or they do not have their own meaning they have to dependent on free morphems okay so all these prefixes like un dis pre again a ab or l all ly and ed now these are uh, suffixes ly and ed how they are suffixes because they are attached to the word but at the back or at the final position look at that dislike dislikely lightly lightly okay financially finance financially etc etc okay now ed play played observed observed all past tense forms of the words together so ed is a free morphem or bound morphem it is a bound morphem it depends on or it has to be attached to or it has to be attached to a free morphem and the last morphem is called as a zero morphem now what is the zero morphem now there are words where we do not have any addition in past tense also in uh, uh, in past tense also and in pluralization also look at the word like say i am just using a word sheep now what is the plural form of a word sheep sheep is sheep sheep is sheep now look at the word like say deer deer is deer cattle is cattle we, we are not saying or we, we can't say in modern grammar or in modern grammar uses we can't say sheep in modern uses we cannot say deers we cannot say cattle so instead of saying deers cattle or sheep we have to say sheep now but the thing is that i saw many sheep i saw many sheep and i saw a sheep now when i am talking about these two sentences how the person how the listener is getting that i have seen a sheep or many sheep so when i'm using a word a sheep it is uh, it is uh, you know it is signifying or it is symbolizing that i have seen only one sheep single sheep but when i say many sheep many is a uh, enumerator which is indicating that i have seen sheep number many number of more num in number etc etc but it does not have any kind of addition to it like say so is not there so this is called as zero morphem now in past tense also sometimes you know the, uh, the words like say cut in plural uh, 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 as we have been, uh, we are having in plural sense in the same way in past tense also we do not have like say we don't say cutted we don't say putted so put becomes put in past tense also and in 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 in, in infinitive also so we do not have these ed forms over there and that is why cut put shoot all these are having zero morphem so we need to talk about the definition of the zero morphem that some words which have the same singular and plural forms example sheep deer and cattle according to the a linguistic plural morphem is present but it is uh, but its phonetic representation is zero so it is very important you know phonetic representation so there is no phonetic realization or phonetic representation that is why we need to talk about or we need to say that there is a zero morphem there is morphem but this morphem is called as zero morphem now so it is not visible in the form of him like sheep deer or cattle such morphems can be analyzed in the following manner that is sheep which is shown in curly bracket theta that is zero again in curly bracket zero curly bracket zero so this is how we can analyze the word or the topic morphology so morphology is one of the important aspects or levels 
of linguistic analysis and that is why we have taken this unit thank you thank you very much